If I was a consumer, what would I want to see? What would I want to experience if I was purchasing a house? On today's episode of Rise, Grand Repeat, we talk to Rachel from VIP Mortgage. We talk about how she's building her community during COVID-19 and how realtors and lenders should be marketing themselves heading into the future. Let's dive right in. Thank you so much for joining on another episode of, of Rise, Ground, Repeat. Um, what, you know, we got connected, what was it, about a month or two ago. Um, kind of kept in contact. We were finishing up a couple big projects, but excited to excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so, you know, love to hear a little bit of backstory, something that caught my eye. Um, I mean, you're in the real estate industry. I I love the real estate industry in general, but you're in, in the lending side, right? Um, yeah, had many discussions with people just on how they market, just their philosophy on marketing. So, um, just from early conversations, I'm excited to hear your thoughts and how you market yourself and, sure. and drive business. Um, but also love to get like a pulse on just how the overall industry is doing with COVID and everything that's going on and anything that you're seeing within the industry, positive, negative, um, and whatnot. And so, but also just, you've been pretty versatile in, in your, uh, you know, where you've come from. I mean, it seemed like you started project management, got to a CMO position. You're in what you're doing now, yeah. um, which is business development. Business development. Yep. I'm a loan officer as well. Awesome. So you've kind of worn many, many hats. And so, yeah, I just would love to hear more. Kind of what's your, what's your backstory? How'd you get to where you are now? And um, just what has the marketing been like on? Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to take you way back in the day. I was a, a sophomore in college at ASU and I was like, you know what? I just want to find a job because I wanted to get my feet wet and figure out what I wanted to do. And I originally thought I was going to go into sports marketing and I was like, I love sports. I just want to be in sports all the time. And so there was an opening at a golf and country club in the East Valley. And I was like, okay, I'll try it out. I know nothing about golf. Um, I still don't play. I never used my free pr privileges. But while I was there, I really got to meet the clientele that we were catering to. And all of these people were purchasing second homes and their memberships at $100,000 a piece for basically a lifestyle. They're paying for the lifestyle. And so as I got to meet all of them and get to know them, I was like, I need to take advantage of these people's knowledge. Like they're all smart and they're very successful. So what are they doing that's different than everybody else? And so when I really started to get to know them, they're like, you need to network. You need to get to know people and add value to people's lives and the business will come. So whatever you do, make sure that you're ingrained in that um, and really try to lead with generosity. Um, so I did that and I was like, this is great. I love golf. I don't play golf, but I love the, you know, the aura. Um, and then I had a horrible experience with one of the general managers out there. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to be for me. Like, I don't know if I want to do sports anymore. Um, so I went back, got my master's in education of all things, um, ended up teaching special education and then went through a life change. I went through a bad breakup, um, after five years with somebody and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I ran, I ran to Wisconsin. I spent the whole summer there trying to figure out what my next step was going to be. And my dad, who's a builder called me and he's like, I need your help. And I was like, I'm not coming back. Like, I, <laughs> like the weather is way too nice out here. Like I'm sitting on a boat every weekend. Um, and he's like, no, 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 like I need your help. So I ended up going back with him working, um, in a marketing position for his construction company and then got recruited over to the title and escrow side from one of our clients who is building multifamily, um, portfolios. And so I swore I was never going to be in title and escrow. I feel like there's a trend. Like I just say no and it happens. Um, and so he recruited me over and honestly, he completely changed the trajectory of my life. Um, he is to this day still one of my mentors and he was an amazing, uh, boss when he was in that role for me and we're still friends and we still do a lot of business together. Um, but unfortunately the title and escrow side was shifting more towards commercial and I really like the, you know, um, emotional side of residential. So one of our clients actually hired me on, on the, the lending cool. side, which ironically I also said, I'm never going to be a lender. <laughs> I hate lenders and here I am. So, so what do you hate about lenders? It's not that I hate lenders and general, but you have to understand in the real estate and the lending industry, they teach you to pass the test. They don't teach you how to communicate. They don't teach you how to, you know, really educate your clients. And especially for me with an education background, it was really important to me to not be that way. Like I have to educate my clients on what the process is. These people are spending 
you know, 200 to $1.8 million on a home, they need to know what's going on. Um, and I just was tired of people having broken promises. And so, you know, Austin, who I work for now, he was the opposite of that. And it, it shows like his success. He's one of the top 200 loan officers in the United States out of 400,000 licensed loan officers. So he knows the stuff. And again, I think I'm in this position because I have good mentors along the way. No, that's awesome. So what fast forward, what are you doing now? Yeah. So I work with Austin's team. We've got 20 people here in Phoenix, and then we have a team of five in San Antonio, and one of our loan officers is moving to Florida, so we'll have a Florida presence as well. Um, And so I work with all of our loan officers, make sure that they're not the lenders that I absolutely hated when I was in a different part of the industry. Um, We work with them. We work on client development. We work on education pieces for our consumers. Um, so even though I'm a licensed loan officer, Austin does all of my deals. And then both of us look over, um, those deals. So the client always has two points of contact if they have any questions or anything like that. And then my side specifically is to work with real estate agents and really teach them how to improve their business, tap into, you know, things that they love and turn that into profits for them. So that's kind of my niche, if you will. It's not, it's super common in this industry. And how do you help them go about that? Because I mean, the the education piece comes in there. There's a sense of marketing. I mean, and that's, I I feel like there's so much opportunity for, for realtors to really dive into their personal brand and who they are and, and really show what value they can bring. I mean, nowadays it's, I mean, you could find most information online, but right. really the the realtor, you're going to partner with someone that you can relate to. Right. So, I mean, what are some of the things that you kind of teach or instill into realtors to help them drive business? Yeah, a hundred percent. So um, what I try to do with every one of my agents is we sit down and we go through and I and basically interrogate them. So I figure out, you know, where they're from, um, where they went to school, what they like to do, what charities they're involved in, what they've done in the past that's worked, what hasn't worked. And we kind of figure out personality wise too, what's going to be the best, you know, route for them to go. So once I figure out those things, then we create a business plan and I put them on accountability. So my agents are getting calls every month and saying, okay, this, this month you told me you were going to do six open houses a week. How's that going for you? What does that look like? What have the conversations been like? What's your conversion rate? So we're really taking a deep dive and seeing what are you not doing? What are you doing? Um, And then, you know, it helps us too, because, you know, if the agent is doing well, we're doing well. Um, And so I'm a huge believer in partnership. Um, And every agent's different. Some people just want, you know, that really good service and they don't want all the accountability. And some agents that are newer, they're like, I just got my license. I can tell you how many square feet there are in an acre, but I couldn't tell you how to get a client, you know, to save my life. And I tell agents, and this is really across the board, hands down, something that every industry can benefit from people buy you. It doesn't matter what company you go to. They're buying the experience that you're providing. They're buying the commonalities. Um, And so you're right. Branding is a huge part of it. Marketing is a huge part of it. Even though people are posting on social media and think nobody's listening. People watch. I mean, I get asked all the time. They're like, Hey, I saw you reading this book. What'd you think about it? And I was like, I posted like three months ago. (laughs) Um, and so it's really, really important for people to have their brand out there, even if it's not a direct lead, if you Mm -hmm. will. So what kind of drove you to marketing? It seems like there's, there's a reoccurring theme that somehow you get into the marketing and just hearing you explain just I mean, you help realtors with their brand identity, figure out the personas and the target market they want to go after, how to communicate to them. I mean, you're a genius when it comes to marketing. I mean, how, how, what has that been like? I mean, why are you so drawn to the marketing side of things? Honestly, I love connecting with people and marketing is a huge part of that, right? So be like, we were just talking about people buy you. And so if you can provide value, that gives me more joy than anything in the whole world. And people hate when they have meeting with me because then I'm like, I've got 10 introduction emails coming your way. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. Um, but, and some people are like, why are you connecting me with this person? I'm like, I don't know. It just feels right. Like, I know that sounds super weird, but I'm like, I would be doing somebody a disservice if I didn't introduce them to one another. Um, so for me, it's kind of figuring out the puzzle pieces. And I love that portion of it. Because you're figuring out how a person can build their brand off of who they are. That's all what brand identity is. It's people get so caught up in the, this is what I do, right. but not, this is who I am and this is who I want to help. Right. The solution, I mean, that I can help with these things, but this is who I want to be around and, and connect with. And I think that gets so, so lost in, in overall marketing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like also with the education side, yeah. there's a huge piece of education oh, yeah. bringing value, which I think is another huge miss when most people go to market with things. It's always... I can help you buy or sell homes, but there's no like, well, why should I work with you? I mean, 
the 30 other thousand people that I'm seeing in ads on my feed, sharing all that, right. they can do the same thing. And so, I mean, what made you realize that the education and bringing value, I mean, sure, it was said to you on the golf course, but sure. when did you actually start executing on that and seeing the results? I think specifically for me in the real estate industry, I was seeing my friends go through the process and they had no idea what was going on. And just something that was common sense to me because I eat, sleep and breathe real estate. I was like, what do you mean you don't know what HOA is? Like, <laughs> everyone knows what that is, a homeowners association. And then you're like, no, this person has never done this. And we were never taught that in high school. Like, they never taught us how to write checks yeah. or how to build yeah. credit or anything how like that. <laughs> right, exactly. They're like, oh, yeah, driver's ed. Here you go on these, like, 80-year-old simulators. Um, but for me, that was just such a huge piece. Like, I was like, if I know the knowledge, why wouldn't I share that with people? Um, and so I was just like, I saw so many people in every industry at networking events, you'd go there and they would throw a card at you and they'd be like, I do this. And you're like, okay, cool. Like, I'm never going to talk to you again. (laughs) Like there was no, there was no follow up. It was hard sales. And like, for me, that's a huge turnoff. So I'm like, if I was a consumer, what would I want to see? What would I want to experience if I was purchasing a house? Um, and that's where the education piece came in. And then, you know, if you look there's kind of two facets. There's the consumers directly that we're working with. And then there's the agents. And I'm like, as an agent, what would I want from my lender partner? Um, And that's where the classes came in. So like right now I'm doing weekly classes for agents, everything from how to tax structure, how to, you know, set up a PLLC, how to do LinkedIn for real estate lead generation. And I partner with other businesses. And in turn, those people are my biggest salespeople. They're like, hey, she's supporting us. You've got to go use Rachel when it comes time to purchase. I was about to ask. So what are some of the things that you're doing? Because it's one thing that I've, I've noticed whenever talking to anyone in the lending space, it's always like, well, we, you know, we don't do any marketing. We just do networking and it's all word of mouth. But I mean, it sounds like you're being pretty proactive in creating that word of mouth, creating that networking situation. Yeah. What are some of the things that you're doing to help create that? I think any time that you can bring in a small business and bring business to those people, they're going to be your biggest sales force. Um, So when this whole coronavirus thing hit, I'm like, how am I going to see all of these people that I constantly send business to? And some of these people, they need the business now more than ever. Um, And so I created a Zoom networking group and kind of did it B&I style where there was one person for every industry. And I brought in some people that, you know, are in Florida and North Carolina and just people that I knew in general. I'm like, you guys got to meet. And it's been great. So just learning how to take all of those connections and put them on a digital platform is huge. And I think people have a misconception of what marketing is. I think they think it's a billboard or it's, you know, an ad or something like that. And it's not. It's how do you build community? How do you provide value? How do you build connections with other business owners to help them benefit? Um, and when you start thinking about other people instead of yourself first, the business will come back to you. There's a couple of people that we're helping kind of create that similar feel where that community providing content on a regular basis. Um, what was it like getting that up and going? I mean, what were some of the the struggles and, or did it just kind of click? It's like, Hey, it kind of clicked. I kind of handpicked everybody. So that was kind of, <laughs> I, I kind of knew like personality wise, okay, mm-hmm. is everybody going to get along with each other? Cause that's a big thing too. Like having your EQ to know who's going to mesh well with another person. Um, but it's been good. And I think, you know, too, it, one of the things that we focused on is like, what are you struggling with in your business? And then it gives you, you know, and everybody else an opportunity to provide value. And I think as people, you know, again, no matter what business you're in, when you have meetings with people, the first meeting should talk nothing about business. And I have a whole like system that I do that actually my mentor at the title company taught me. Um, And it was like, he goes by frog, which is family, recreation, occupation and goals. Um, And so we talk about that stuff and it allows us to find commonalities. Right. So now you're building the rapport, the trust. Second question is, what are you struggling with? And then people people are very honest with you because they're like, oh, this person might be able to help. So if you're like, hey, I'm struggling with this and I have a resource that can help, now it makes me look great, right? Because I'm yeah. finding a, a solution to somebody's problem. And then the last question I end every meeting with is like, how can I help you? Yeah. And just leave it and sit and smile. <laughs> <laughs> and how does that work out? It works out great. I mean, I've gotten so much business just that way because you know what? If I'm able to help that person, when it comes time for someone to purchase or buy, they're going to be like, you have to talk to Rachel. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's great because you're helping somebody. Word of mouth is always going to be the strongest form of marketing. But people think that word of mouth only comes from people who have actually bought from you. But like you're saying, you can create a community and just based off of the the emotion that you convey, the information that you convey. I mean, they could help become word of mouth without being an actual client. Yep. And 
I think that's where the misconception is, is where, well, I can't do anything word of mouth, but I think there's a lot that you can do to amplify that. And I mean, there, there's so much power in the numbers, especially as that community grows. Yep. So is, is building this community something that you're going to keep trying to do as we move oh, forward, sure. even if things open up and, you know, people go back to non-virtual stuff? A hundred percent. I've always been that way. Um, I think it's my dad that taught me that. He's from the Midwest. He's never met a stranger. So if you see him in the grocery store, I'm sorry. I'm just going to apologize. <laughs> He's going to hate me for saying that. Um, but no, I think, you know, it, it's one of those things that really fuels me and I love it. I love having a great community and they say that, you know, you're a culmination of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, and so I'd rather keep good people around and, and help them out. And in turn, it helps everybody else out. So yeah. I always tell people build community, provide value. Those are going to be your biggest sales tools. So, I mean, as we've been speaking about the COVID stuff, I mean, yeah. what are the biggest changes before and after all of this, both on the realtor side and the lending side? I mean, has it have things slowed down? Have they gotten faster? I mean, has it changed the way people do business? Yes, um, to all. Everything's <laughs> changed. Um, it's it's really interesting because we're in a kind of weird spot in real estate. We have very low inventory here in the state of Arizona, um, which means there's a lot of demand for the stuff that's out there. And then so sellers are in a really good spot because they've got a position to negotiate and mm -hmm. boost up the price of their home. But then you've got buyers who interest rates are at an all time low. And so purchasing power is there. Um, so it's definitely shifted. There's a, Arizona is a hot market just in general. Um, we've never really been hit with some of the, you know, extreme cases of recession, like some of the other areas of the country have been, um, just because so many people are moving here and we're seeing a huge influx from out of state. You're looking at California, they're still shut down. So they're sending a lot of people our way. Um, so it's booming. It's a booming industry. I'm very thankful to be a part of it. Um, refinances are through the roof right now. Um, everybody is trying to refinance and bring their interest rate down. So now is a good time to do that. Um, but if you look at the real estate and the lender side of things, mm -hmm. we're not out at networking events. We're not out at open houses. We're not allowed to be, um, even though we're deemed essential, they don't necessarily want you to sit in an open house and just yeah. wait and with a bunch of strangers. Um, so the marketing has definitely shifted. A lot more of it has gone to digital. Um, and I think it's great because now it's more socially acceptable to work with people in other areas. So for us being licensed in so many states, I now have way more borrowers on the East Coast and the West Coast than I've ever had before because it's acceptable to be like, hey, you want to hop on a Zoom call? Yeah. Um, whereas before they're like, this person's from Arizona. Like, why would I do business with her? Um, so it's been good, but agents have to shift their mindset. Like, it's not just going to be, I'm just going to sit here and wait until this all passes. Mm -hmm. The business isn't going to come to you. So how do you cultivate those leads? You have to use Facebook as your friend. Um, I get a ton of business. Like we were talking before, I have a hundred people registered for a home buyer seminar that I posted four days ago. Um, so knowing how to, again, figure out what people are asking for and filling in that void for them. That's been a huge help for me. So be part of those Facebook community groups, go on your go Gilberts and living Chandlers. There's a lot of need out there, but you also have to realize that your approach cannot be, I'm a lender, <laughs> reach out to me, apply here. Here's my link. It's going to be like, okay, what's HOA? Here's what HOA is. Here's what debt to income is educate. And then people will rely on you to be their person that helps them. Do you have any sort of, uh, I guess, document or process doc that kind of outlines the best practice and how someone should be posting in groups and stuff like that? Because that's probably going to be the first question is like, sure, I know I need to post more and do right. more digitally, but I just don't know what to say. I mean, I think I have some, like I have content pre ready to go and I plan everything out. So as I'm not just like, oh, today's Monday, when am I going to post? <laughs> You know, um, and I have really good partners in the social media world that help me create content as well and say like, OK, break it up. You've got to do personal. You have to do professional. You have to do the expertise le level. Um, and so that's been really helpful for me. But I think too, like rely on some of those mastermind groups that are in real estate and ask, like if you're a real estate agent, go on those groups and say, hey, what do you think about doing this? Or what? how have you changed the way you lead gen with everything that's going on with COVID? Um, but I can definitely make something too. If somebody, <laughs> if someone wants me to, I can totally make something up. Do you see a growing trend in, in just overall Facebook groups? I mean, I see them being pushed quite more frequently. I mean, yeah. it's, I've joined, I wasn't so much reluctant, but I just never joined anything. And it's amazing how much knowledge is, is in those groups. I mean, especially if you find some really good ones to your point, it's like, you can just throw a question out there and like, it gets answered. I mean, we, we did a podcast with a project management company and I was just talking about how, they could probably alleviate a lot of their customer service requests if they just 
push people to this group and let the user base just answer each other's questions. Are you doing anything to expand on that? Or do you think, uh, you know, that's just going to be a continued grow, growing trend? I think it's a great growing trend. Um, I don't think it's going away, uh, especially because people are in their houses more. They're spending more time on the computer. They're spending more time on social media. Um, it's so easy for us to be like, who do you recommend? And someone tags somebody. Um, I think, you know, you have to be strate- strategic in those groups. So find people that are complementary to what you do and partner with them. Um, so for me, if it's a real estate agent, be like, Hey, we're working on this, let's work on it together instead of separately. Cause we're both aiming for the same goal. Um, but you know, ask questions, figure out what people are. Again, you're building commonality. You're figuring out where people's pain points are. Um, and that's where it's going to lead you to add value. Um, and if there's not a group out there, create one. I mean, what are some of the tips that you have on creating that? I mean, how do you get people to join? What, what types of content should people be posting? Cause it's, Hearing more and more people acknowledge that, yeah, groups are definitely the way it's going. Sure. Um, I would love to create it, but I just don't, I don't know what to post. I, and I think this goes more into the planning and the yeah. strategy side of things. So I guess outside of that, I mean, from a bird's eye view, I mean, how do you plan your content? I know you said you have helpers, but overall, yeah. how do you kind of plan what all you're going to say, what you're going to post and and all that? Sometimes it's just reading the room or the group, if you will. Um, figuring out what the common trends are and then, you know, capitalize on that. We created the home buyer summer because I was in a group with a lot of first time home buyers that had no idea what was going on. And I'm like, instead of everyone asking 30 questions a day, why don't I just create one thing that explains the whole process? So that's a huge portion of it. As far as creating a group, you can do it off of your interest. So if you like to snowboard, you create a snowboarding group. If you like to read, now it's a great time. People are at home reading, but being seen as a leader, people are going to come to you first. And so I think it's important for us as professionals to not necessarily look from the business standpoint, but if we were a consumer of the content that we're posting, what would we like to see? And the right audience will come. Um, I think people try to fit people into a certain box and you're like, Mm -hmm. you don't need to work with everybody and you don't want to work with everybody. It just, it looks desperate for one and two, like some people just don't, aren't compatible. Um, and so it's important to realize that you're not going to win everybody over. You don't want to. And as you continue to grow your business, you can pick and choose who you work with. You seem to have just over index and EQ. Um, oh, geez. I, <laughs> I don't it, know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that something that can be taught? I mean, well, no, you're very empathetic. I mean, you could tell that by how much you talk about putting yourself in the consumer's shoes. But I mean, how, how much of that, I mean, is kind of taught how much is just you know what I mean like is that something that that is teachable and like because I mean a lot of what you're saying is take a step back and just get a feel of what the situation is and figure out how to bring value based on that situation but some people have a hard time doing that I mean do you have any recommendations on I think you know some of it is definitely innate um growing up with two parents in the midwest it's completely different culture um I mean you talk to everybody like you can't get out of the grocery store in less than 20 minutes because the clerk is going to talk to you about like what the Packers did and you know at the game this past Sunday um but I think too like salespeople were never taught, right? They were always just taught sell, sell, sell. Yeah. It's not how. Um, they know what the product that they're supposed to be selling or you know the service. But if you step back and take a look and ask the right questions, like the best selling is leading with questions. Yeah. Ask those questions um, and just don't listen to respond, right? Like actually listen mm-hmm. to know what's going on and how you can, again, provide value. So I think it can be taught. There's so many great podcasts out there, yours included, um, books. There are tools. And you know what? I tell everybody, find a mentor, find a coach. I have a coach. What is that process like? Because, I mean, I've I've been told that quite often. It's like a PhD. (laughs) It's intense. Is it? Yeah. What are some of the things that you go through? I mean, what do they help with? Is it similar to kind of what you're doing? Just what are you struggling with and kind of? It's like on steroids. Um, You know, it's funny. I always tell people, like, if you are going to hire a coach, which I always recommend, um, make sure that they know what they're doing, right? Because everyone claims to be a life coach these days or a business coach. But like, look at their accolades. Like, what have they done? What is attract you to that person? And personality is huge, too. Because if I went in and had a real estate coach that told me to cold call all day long, I'd fail. (laughs) It just wouldn't work for my personality. So do your homework and interview. Um, But yeah, I think the best coaches have the accountability piece down. They've got the thinking piece down. Um, you know, with my coach specifically, we're goal planning and then we're breaking it down. So you do high level goals and then, you know, what are you doing each week? What are you doing each day? What are you doing each hour? 
to do that. Yeah. Um, and they push you, bring you. you down to that. Oh yeah. Shower. Mm -hmm. I time block like a crazy person. Do you? Yeah. It's insane. Um, but I think you have to, mm -hmm. because especially in my industry, you get so distracted, right? So you're doing one thing and then your phone rings and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then you've got a prequal coming out and it's, you can be all over the place, but if you sit down and do the right things, that's where it's going to, yeah. you know, go. But no, I, I think a coach is great. It's kind of like when you try to lose weight and you can do it on your own, no problem. But if you have a personal trainer or someone guiding you that yeah. that's all they do, you're going to make a progress a lot quicker. Yep. It exp expedites that success. A hundred percent. Yeah. So one thing that you mentioned that was pretty cool, I mean, you, you created an event, what was it, four days ago, and you already have 100 people? Yeah, it was insane. I, I get like such a thrill. I like keep hitting the Zoom refresh. And I'm like 101, 102. It's great. So, so I know there's a lot of people that, that would be listening that I want to do that. Like, how did you get to the point where you got that type of turnout? I mean, are these people that are in your database? I mean, how are you engaging with them? Or are these brand new people that maybe are running ads to that they're signing up or how, I mean, how have you gone about doing so that? So it's been organic. I haven't paid for any of these people to come, um, to the seminar. What I, it's a Facebook group that I have just found a gold mine in and people are answering questions, asking questions. And then I'll go in and say, okay, here's what, you know, the answer is to that question. And by the way, on Thursday, we're doing a webinar about this whole process. We're going to go over your question. We'll have a Q and a section and I'm going to record it and send it to you. Um, and then I'm like, share it with your friends. So sometimes the best way is to just ask, um, you know, because people don't know. No, it seems to be reoccurring as well. I yeah. mean, just just ask. And that's I mean, that's something I struggle with, too. It's like show all the value and all that, but never going for the ask. And, and you know, a lot of missed opportunity. But I love I mean, I love what you're saying where a question gets asked. I mean, you answer the mm -hmm. best of your ability, but then you promote the, right. the event that's going on. And I think there's a lot of people that just don't answer the question. They just drop links everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you have a strategy? on there. I mean, is it literally just bring value? And yeah, I would say just bring value. And because then you're establishing yourself as the expert. And sometimes if it's a question, there might be a feed there. So if someone says, Hey, is this going to count against my debt to income? Just for an example. Um, and then I'll answer the question and then someone will say, Hey, thanks so much. I really appreciate all of your help. Yeah, no problem. If you're looking for more information, just so you know, I've got a webinar coming up totally up to you. If you can't make it, just register and I'll send you the recording. Soft sell. Gotcha. So you respond and if someone responds, then you drop it. So you don't do like the response, a couple spaces and then drop the link. If it's or a long winded question where it's got multiple parts, I'll say, Hey, here's the gotcha. brief answer, but we're going to go more in depth in, into it um, yeah. tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I think doing that because then they're, you're allowing them to control kind of the way that it goes and they feel yeah. empowered, right? So they don't feel like you're driving the conversation, they're driving it. And then you're coming in and saying, oh, by the way. I love that. I think there's a ton of white space. Have you ever, like, just with that strategy, have you ever heard of like Quora? No. So, I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing, but it's literally a platform where people just ask questions and then there's a thread of all these answers. It's something that we're working on bringing a solution to. We have a way where we can real estate. I mean, yeah. basically it shows all the top questions, how many viewers, all that type of stuff, but essentially just feeding someone and they can do video content, whatever it is. But literally, I mean, the questions are out there. Just right. go find them and answer them. And if you can bring good value, that's where maybe that person that you answered isn't going to be the one that right. works with you. But someone that saw that exchange goes, I like how they think that's who I'd want to talk to. So, I mean, it sounds like a lot of what you're doing is just literally just bringing value. It's so true. And honestly, like as professionals, we learn the industry more as we teach. Right. Mm -hmm. And we come up with their questions that they ask. And I'm like, let me double check on that for you. Um, but I think, too, like it, in anything, if you're seeing a common trend of questions for your industry, take that question and make a minute video out of it and post I it. I love that. You know, like if you're getting a lot of questions like, hey, what is a down payment assistance program? Take it, do a little one minute video. You can throw your Snapchat filter on there like I do. And then, you know, post it. Because again, like you said, it might not be that person that's your ideal client, but you never know who in your friend group is watching. I mean, I had someone from high school reach out to me and they're like, hey, we were thinking about buying a home. We... We figured we'd ask you because you would know what to do. We see your post about, you know, rent yeah. increases and things like that. So you never know. Yeah. But it's a great way to really establish yourself as an expert and answer those questions at the same time. And would you even say most most of the time that who you're answering isn't the one that reaches out? But it's usually I saw I saw something you posted three months ago and it really spoke to me and. I mean, is that typically what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really interesting because you're like that. I would never expect, expect mm -hmm. that person to ask me that question. But 
you you put it out there and if nothing happens then great but if something does like you benefit from it yeah how was it getting in front of the camera the first time oh we all hate being on video like i <laughs> like i hate being on video right now but uh, <laughs> it's not there i mean you look great you look great but uh, you know it's nerve-wracking and but i ha- think you have to remember nobody likes being on camera mm-hmm. at all like yeah. we're not being photoshopped we're not doing all of that stuff and that's something that my coach and i work on a lot she's very very heavy on videos in fact, so we have to do 10 video texts every day to people in our phone book and they go over so well. I have people like I was in tears watching this and I was like, really? Like I was just coming from the heart. But um, so I've become more comfortable with it. Uh, but of course, we're our own worst critics. Just do it and post it. Like, don't sit there and watch it five times. <laughs> like, don't go back and be like, my voice is so annoying because you'll go crazy yep, doing it. Just do it. I, I love the the tip that you gave where use a filter, use Snapchat, yeah. save it. I mean, it, it definitely alleviates some of that fear there. But are there any other tips that you have for people? Because I mean, it's again, more and more people are saying, yeah, I know video is the way to go. Right. Video is the future. Mm-hmm. I just every time I go, I just can't do it. And so it's it's outside of just doing it. I mean, quantity will always help. Right. I mean, the more you do. But are there any other tips? If you're worried about the script, practice it in front of the mirror a couple times just so you become more confident with the content that you're presenting. Um, get like something that holds your phone to videotape it because a lot of times when we're nervous and we're holding it like this, we shake and we don't realize it until we watch it afterwards. Um, so those are always good. And then no matter what, put subtitles on your video. Because I know like for me, sometimes if I'm just laying in bed and I'm watching something on Netflix, I may be scrolling Facebook and I don't have my sound on, but I can see you. And if I can read it, I'll be more engaged. Did you know that like eight, it's 80 to 85 percent of people watch videos without sound on? Yep, 100 yes. percent. And there's so many great like areas that you can do that now um, that are like free programs and oh, things yeah. like that. Um, but the other thing you can do too, there's an app and I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it's literally a teleprompter for your phone. So while it's videotaping you, you can type in what you want to say and then you're looking right at it and you're just reading and reading and reading. Those are the best. We have yeah. one for that camera, but it, it's like a dual screen. So it goes in front of the camera. So it's like, you guys what are real re- official. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was pretty cheap, but, um, it, it, it helps a lot. I mean, when we first started doing this, I remember we were laughing two years ago or the other day we two years ago, I mean, just saying who I am and what the company name was literally 28 takes and took like four hours. Like it's ridiculous. But, but over time it got easier, it got easier, it got easier. And then, yeah, just making sure you don't listen, just post it, let it go. Well, and be yourself. I think people really like when you're vulnerable and that you're real because it's relatable. You know, if someone's standing and they're like, I don't know what to say. (laughs) And if you buy a home right now, like nobody (laughs) wants to watch that. But if you're like goofing around, like Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I'm on a Zoom call and my dog like runs through the background and people are like, is that your dog? Oh my God, what kind is it? Um, So just be authentic. And there are so many other tools out there too, like, you know, the, the lighting and you can go on Amazon and it's really inexpensive. Um, but just be yourself and yeah. you realize you're not perfect. Nobody in this industry is perfect. And people relate to that because it shows you're human. I say that so much. I mean, there's probably, you can cut down on production costs so much by yeah. not doing the extra 20 takes mm-hmm. and the extra 20 t- takes it took to get perfection. People are going to like the authentic version anyways. Right. And I think that's a huge growing trend that, I mean, don't need all the fancy cameras and all that to make good quality content that right. resonates and gets your message across. And I think too, like be intentional with your call to action in the video. It's always like end it with a question, you know, because that will help increase your engagement with the person that's viewing. Like for me with my 10 video texts that I have to send every day, I always end it with the question. So it's like, hey, so and so I just want to let you know, I really appreciate you. Do you remember that one time when we did X, Y and Z? By the way, how's your family? send. That's what I was going to ask is love the video stuff. So it's like, are you, so you're not creating one video to send out 10 people. You're literally like intentional on who I'm going to send it to. And then you are doing a video that speaks to them that one day it starts with the A contacts to go through to the little video. Hey, so-and-so saw, uh, that your daughter just graduated from high school. So sorry. She couldn't have a graduation. What are you guys going to do to celebrate? Send. How, how's that been? I feel like it's that would great. be game changing. People lose their mind about it. I They're bet. like, this made my day. Like, oh my gosh, it was so great to see you. And then they end up complimenting you. So you're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> They're like, your makeup looks on point. I'm like, oh my God, I love this. I got to send like 20 more. Um, but no, I think people just like, they don't check in, you yeah. know? And yeah. I, you talk to some people, like nobody sent me a video text during COVID. Yeah. Like... 
my hairdresser and my insurance person, like they're not sending that stuff. Yeah. And so you're differentiating yourself and you're not selling, but naturally they're going to say, Hey, how's everything been going for you? How's work? Yeah. Works great. Yeah. It's actually a great time to refinance. <laughs> that, you I know? Mean, that's usually what it leads to is like, right. great. How's work? How, how's mm-hmm. life? All that. But I mean, I'm sure what it's doing as well, I don't know how long I've been doing it, but I'm yeah. sure there's gonna be people that even don't ask about how work is doing, but then they go look you up on social and go, oh, wait, I, I didn't even know yeah. she's doing this. Hey, I, I have dinner and I met right. someone that, you know, needs to refinance or whatever it may be. And all of a sudden you're top of mind whenever that conversation happens and it's like, hey, check out, you know, their, their page. And then all yeah. of a sudden it creates, you know, some opportunities for you. That, that's genius. No, and it's awesome. And there are people on my phone from like high school, which was a while ago. Um, and, you know, I haven't talked to them in years. <laughs> but I, How hard was it? It wasn't hard because really? you're like, hey, with everything that's going on, just wanted to check in. I know it's been years, but like, how's your family? Mm-hmm. Send. If they don't respond, who cares? Yeah. You got like 30 other A's <laughs> in your phone. It's fine. <laughs> you know? And it's just an easy way to, again, keep, stay top of mind. Because especially with our industry, there are 73,000 licensed real estate agents and 53,000 of them are actually practicing. Um, so there's a lot of competition. I think it's like one in every 164 people has a real estate license in the state of Arizona. It's insane. Oh, in the state of Arizona? Yeah, like Maricopa County area. Um, so there's a lot, but it's, it's like, what are you doing that's different from all of those other 73,000 people? So you have to be top of mind. Because that- the worst is like when you go on Facebook and you see, we bought a house. And it wasn't from you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Is the video texting, is that like... Because I, I could see how that, I mean, outside of business and all that, I feel like people would communicate a lot more that way. I mean, have you started having more conversations that oh, way? Oh, yeah. 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 And I mean, think about it. There's apps that capitalize on that now. Marco Polo. I, I mean, just heard about that two weeks ago, three weeks that, ago. Because people always send me videos and I have like my hair on top of my head and I like <laughs> <laughs> wear pajamas and like, oh my God, I got to answer this back. Um, but no, I think it's great because mm-hmm. it's just different. Again, you're mm-hmm. setting that expectation that it's different. And some people, they'll send you a video back. It's really great when they send you one back and they're like, hey, Rachel, it was so great to see your video text. And, and you can tell they're like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. So there are some people that'll send a voice message back. There are some people that you know, will just normally text you. But I think, again, it goes, it's the intention that counts yeah. and being consistent with it. That I mean, how much does that play in a role in, in the success that you've seen, you know, along, yeah, consistencies? People, you know, do it one time and then it's like you lose that client and you're trying to get a new client. And it's like if people just focused on retaining the clients they already have that have already been through the experience, know what to expect, know that you're the best at what you do. That's yeah. way easier than trying to go and court a new client. Most expensive client to get is a new one. Right. I mean, uh, retention but we see is it here. all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, it just people aren't consistent. And, and how do you stay consistent? Is it the time blocking that helps? Time blocking and just having systems and structures in place. You know, and and making sure that like, hey, when so and so's one year anniversary of the closing of their house comes around, I'm the one that makes that call. I'm the one calling the agent saying, Hey, this week, so and so, it's gonna be a year. You should probably reach out to your client, right? That's yeah. So now you're hitting both sides of right. uh yeah. Makes me the, look the good cli- and uh-huh. I'm talking to the other agent that wasn't my client in the first exactly. place. Um so just thinking outside the box. Like this the little thing. You are smart. Thank you. <laughs> I I love this stuff. Like I eat, sleep, and breathe. I listen to more real estate podcasts than you ever would care to know about. Um, Have you thought about starting your own? No. No? I don't know. I think I would be... No. I, I think I you'd be great. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it. I'd be like, okay. Because I mean... I always tell people too, like, I didn't make this stuff up. Like I learned from other people. Um, So just use those resources that are out there. There's so many free resources and we all spend time, you know, that's wasted on Facebook or whatever. (laughs) But even when I'm responding to group stuff, I've got my podcast on. Really? Yeah. I've got podcasts on. I'm listening and I'm like, oh, good idea. Jot it down. Mm -hmm. Like I have a notebook all the time just so I can jot ideas down or in your phone, in your notes section. Um, But I think you have to want to be good at what you do. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, you have such a passion and a love for it. And I think I think that's where there's a lot of opportunity. I think there's a lot of people doing things that they just aren't passionate about. It's just kind of they started it, kind of took off, but it's not what they want to do for the world or have the impact they want. And then you're just not going to be that excited to get out of bed and talk about it and share everything that, you know, and continually figure out how to create better systems and processes Mm -hmm. that that 
create more value for your clients and customers. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't think you can really teach that. It's more just finding it, but can clearly see the passion when, whenever you're talking about it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard too, because you look at shows like HGTV or any of the Bravos, like million dollar listing, they glamorize real estate. And it's not that like, yes, you saw that you, your neighbor's house went under contract in one day of multiple asking, but they didn't show you the 45 hours of prep time that that real estate yeah. agent had to put into it. And I tell agents all the time, like, don't post sold in one day over asking, because if someone sees that they're going to be, oh, well, so, so could do that. I can just do it on my own. Why do I need a real estate agent? Yeah. Because you're not posting, you know, I had to hire the photographer. I had to do the marketing campaigns on Facebook. I had to host an open house. Like there are all these other things and you're doing yourself a disservice. Real estate's not easy. There are days where I want to go home and drink. Like I'm just <laughs> going to be totally honest with you. There are days where you're like, what is going on here? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you have to want want it and be excited about it. Like I wake up every morning, I'm like, who can I help today? I think the the behind the scenes and basically how it's made goes a lot further than the success stories. I mean, right. the success stories are the, they're good to have, but I mean, it's sure. it's uh, um, I, I think showing the day in the life goes a long way because most people don't understand what people go through on the other side where it's like, oh, well, if I should hire a realtor, what are they actually going to do for me? And it's showing that day to day, not only just for them, but juggling multiple clients and doing it like how crazy busy it is. Yeah. And I think that right there helps show the work ethic. It's like, oh, they're really grinding to try and, uh, you know, make results for their clients. That's yeah. who I want to work with. And so I think people get too caught up in the the sold in one day, sold right. over asking price. Right. Show how you made that happen. And I think that's going to go further than than getting the one day. It's being genuine. Yeah. You know, it goes back to that whole thing. And it just... It's crazy to me because people, again, they think it's really, really easy. Mm -hmm. And I think no matter what industry you're in with your partners and your clients and your team members, you have to set expectations, you know, and I do that too with my agents. Hey, I'm going to pour my heart and soul into you, but if you're not pulling your weight, it's not going to work. Same with buyers. Hey, there are things that are going to go wrong. This is just how real estate is. Yeah. Underwriters going to find something. They're going to find out that you bought that Louis Vuitton purse during the like. <laughs> we told seen you it not all. to. Yes, we told you. <laughs> you did it anyways. But to be, you know, I think saying that and acknowledging, hey, there might be something that goes wrong, but this is exactly why we're here. This is how we're going to communicate. Even asking people like, how do you like to be communicated with? Some people like to call on the phone. Some people like to text. That's a huge one that they gets overlooked. Huge. It's huge. I I can call someone 20 times. They won't answer me. I text somebody. It's 30 (laughs) seconds later. So like knowing that, knowing your clientele, even knowing how your team members work, you have to have a cohesive team. Yeah. You're only as strong as your locker room. I, I, I'm a huge proponent of that. I grew up playing baseball and that's, yeah, been on, on teams where we had great talent, but behind the scenes didn't work together. Didn't win championships, had mediocre players, but we all bonded really well. Strong locker room, won championships. It's, it's, yeah. It's amazing. It's knowing how each other ticks. And that's, I mean, it comes down to communication. Right. Yeah. So as we kind of wrap things up, I'd love to hear if someone's brand new on the lending side and the real estate side, yeah. it's like, I don't know what to do. What are, awesome. what are some, uh, yeah, tips that you have to get things going? What are, how can they create process? How can they get the wheels in motion to start selling without just posting? I'm a realtor. I can help you buy and sell. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's part of it is like acknowledging that you are in the industry now, but don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to post every day that you're a real estate agent. People generally figure that out, but tap into your sphere, like make a list of the top 50 people in your life. That'll be an extension of your sales force and have them help you. Um, so many times people overlook that and they'll try to buy leads or they'll go on Facebook groups right away and be like, okay, whatever. But the people like mom, dad, brother, sister, best friend, those are people that are going to refer you no matter what, because they love you. Um, and so definitely tap into that. I would say have a plan, um, write down your goals. And even if it's something is like, learn how to do an open house, meet with a lender and find a good partner. Um, know what title and escrow is like, these are things that they kind of touch on in the actual classes themselves, but it's definitely not an overbearing idea of what it is. Um, I I think just figuring out what your schedule looks like. This is not going to be a, Hey, I'm going to call for two hours and I'm going to watch Netflix. And then, (laughs) you know, maybe go golf for the day. Mm -hmm. Like your first couple months, you are going to be pounding pavement. And ask people in your office, ask, you know, people that have been in the industry where they failed. Like, that's a huge question. I ask Austin all the time on my team, like, 
what did you fail at? What do you suck at? <laughs> and he'll tell me like yeah. he's, you know, because then you don't have to repeat yeah. that and then go through that whole thing on your own. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. I think is a huge thing that people are like, well, I don't want to seem dumb. Yeah. It's not, you don't seem dumb. You just don't know because you haven't experienced it yet. There are things that we run into that I've never experienced in mm-hmm. all my time in the business. So, um, yeah, having a plan is huge and having somebody that can help guide you is always a big, a big yeah. thing as well. Being strategic. Love it. And what are you most excited for in the next three to six months? What are you working on? What does your future look like? I'm just excited to help people get into homes. Um, Refinances are huge. So if we can save people money, that's exciting. But we're growing our team. I love that. I love having a bigger footprint. Um, Austin's an amazing leader and he's really good at what he does. And so I'm excited for him um, because he deserves all the success in the world. But yeah, I mean... Just have fun along the way. That's what I'm excited about. Meeting new people, building new connections, helping people along the way. And then, you know, hopefully the world opens back up so I can travel. (laughs) But other than that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, from everything it sounds like, it sounds like COVID, the craziness, all that stuff hasn't slowed you down. In fact, it seems like uh, you've been more innovative and uh, uh, more passionate about what you're doing, which is which is awesome. So. Rachel, how can people find you if they're a realtor or lender, want to get part of your yeah. groups? I mean, go ahead. Where where can people get a hold For of you? Sure. Where can they find your group? Um, you can find me on Instagram, R L Tarman, T A R M A N is my handle. Um, Facebook, just Rachel Tarman, T A R M A N. Uh, you can call me 480-495-6690. Text me. I'm always happy to help people, even if you're new in the industry um, or just need a second opinion on something seriously reach out we're all in this together and if i can help somebody i'm totally down to do that cool i love it thank you appreciate the time no thank you